on this track, fam. Get to it, y'all. All right, guys. Welcome back to Bitchin' and Bassin'. Um, today we're gonna be unboxing some tackle. I got a Cabela's, but first. But first. Don't forget guys, go check out my other video. Uh, I think it's titled Catching Cold Water Bass at a North Park. Um, make sure you go like the video, subscribe, because I am giving away. Once we hit 100 likes, I know it's a big ask, whether it happens next week or next year, once that video gets 100 likes, I'm giving away a rattle trap, and that's what I was catching them on in that video, guys. So I'm actually giving away an actual Bill Lewis rattle trap, and you'll see here that uh, there's more than one to choose from. Whichever one that is in this clip right here, you guys pick it and you could have it. That being said, guys, let's hurry up and get into today's video. Um, it is a Cabela's tackle unboxing. Now, I did not order the tackle. Um, this is over the last month, month and a half. I've made three or four trips there for work and for family reasons. I tend to pass by it a lot and it is hard for me to pass that exit. So this video is a product of that. So this is like three trips. So let's get into it, guys. Let's get into it. That's the box. That's what we gotta go through. And I'm sure you could see all kind of cat hair kind of floating around. And yes, I'm married into two white cats. I love them dearly now, but yeah, cat hair is not fun. I'm just gonna start grabbing handfuls, guys. And if it's regular stuff you've seen a lot of, you know, we'll kind of just go right through it. So, right off the bat. Um, I have, I've been buying a lot of crankbaits lately, so. Um, I grabbed a couple that were on sale. These are just KVD 1.5s, your standard size. These work great. Plus, I like the KVD 1.5s and up because they have bulky hooks. But we got one here in bluegill, one here in delta red, I think. This is the same color trap that I was catching them on in the other video, but this is a 1.5 crankbait instead. So these, these will come into play in spring once that water finally warms up to those higher 50s and lower 60s. You will see me throwing some cranks. All right. Speaking of some hard baits, I also have got another rattle trap. Um, this is in a quarter ounce, and this is in the green tomato color. Um, I have a bunch of half ounce, obviously. I've stocked up on some uh, rattle traps, lipless, red eye shad, whatever you want to call it. But we got another little quarter ounce through there in uh, green tomato. So just a different color, some brights, some reds on there. So I'm sure that will catch fish. Also, for the upcoming spawn, I've never fished a spawn. I don't even know what the spawn's like here in Western PA. Throw some comments down below if you can help me out with that. Like, what, how are we going to fish the spawn here in PA, guys? Let me know. I've never fished a spawn. But I got me some white rage menaces. These are actually baby rage menaces. I don't know why I got them this small. I should have got the bigger size. But um, either way, we should find something to work this that will work with this. Whether, even if it's not the spawn, we'll throw it on the back of something. But white baby rage cross rage cross not menaces sorry and those are in the three inch and that is the pearl color all right another favorite one of my baits um got an elite chatter bait here a chatter bait elite this is in the half ounce color uh, or color half ounce weight um it's a little nicer than the regular ones with the hand tied skirt but i did not have i only have a couple in half ounce so I'm going to put together a little half ounce box just with all different kind of heavier stuff. So if I hit some deep water, we'll be ready. All right. Up next, I've been buying a bunch of these because I do not have a buzz bait fish either. So um, I got a couple good ones, but I couldn't walk past this one. This is the War Eagle 
3A sounds buzz bait and this is the gold blade in a black and gold skirt. I like this one. I took it out of the pack and kind of messed with it a little bit. It's really squeaky and sounds just like something that hasn't been greased in a long time and that's perfect I hear for buzz bait fishing. Sticking with top water. Um, I have a couple of these but I did not have one in this bone color. This is a head on Zara spook. Just a nice little top water walk the dog bait or a plug, whatever you want to call it. So these guys are legendary lures. Everyone should have at least one of those in their box. So sticking with the top water, we got a Smithwick Devil's Horse here, guys. Um, and this is strictly all because of Roland Martin. He's one of the legends in the game, and I'm at the other spectrum here starting out. So this is just respect for my man Roland. This is a four and a half inch same deal as a spook but this has some propellers on it it's a 3 a ounce and i got that in the uh yellow with black stripes on it and it has some uh orange specks on the bottom of it we would definitely have video of me catching fish on that all right up next we got some terminal tackle i've never seen these before these are vmc drop dead hooks these are three aught with a 1 8 ounce on them and the thing with these is the weight's a little bit further to the back, which is supposed to cause that bait to uh, more or mimic a dying fish more than if the weight was further up on the bait. All right. Ooh, we got a lot of top water at the top of this box. And the funny thing is this box is jig heavy. There's a lot of jigs in there. So oh, they must have made their way to the bottom. But sticking with top water, we got us a River to Sea Spitting Wah. I've been looking for one of these, uh, either the Spitting Wah or the Chugging Wah, basically a popping frog. This is in the 55 size and it is a leopard frog. I like these because it also has the designs on the bottom. All right, uh, one of the times I went to Cabela's, these were on sale. There was a guy with a table talking about them and there was a bunch on sale and they are some Yozeri hard baits. This is a jerk bait. It is the 3DS Minnow 100 and it's a suspending jerk bait. It has the 3D prism finish on it and it is a 9 16 ounce four inch bait. It's got the two hooks, has that spade bill on it. Looks like it'll deflect pretty well if, um, if it does run into anything, but definitely can't wait to step up my jerk bait game. I've only thrown a jerk bait once or twice and I did not have the right equipment, so I did not catch anything on it. It did not go quite well. So um, the second one we have here is a 3DB, 3D prism wave motion wave motion shad and this is also a suspending wear um it's two and three quarter inches long and it is three a sounds i actually thought this was a crank at first but i think this might actually be a, just a smaller jerk bait or it might work as both so um let me know in the comments guys if you've used this again it's the yozuri shad suspending shad and it is the 3db with the wave motion which is these little ribs on the bottom there I don't know if you could see them, but it's supposed to give off a different vibration the way they move the water. But that is it right there. That is a juicy little nugget. It's got the little rooster tail feathers on the back. Two decent looking hooks. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to change them out. Will do. I, I'll change out my hooks if they tend to be a problem. But And it's got that deep diving bill on it. So, guys, let me know. Is this a jerk bait or is this a crank bait? Or is it some type of hybrid? But either way, I know I'm going to catch some fish with that that bad boy right there so what do we have next remember before when i was talking about rolling and scott martin this is another idea well i don't know if it's his idea but i got this from scott martin and these are horny toads in watermelon red and i got these because i saw scott martin using these as swim jig trailers which i never put two and two together but i thought that was a pretty good idea or maybe it's just common sense but it's something I didn't know um, something if you want a little bit bigger of a profile and it also has the ultra vibe speed crawl legs on it I don't know if you guys can see those there but these things move very fast in the water so if you need uh, a lot of action with uh, not big bulky trailers hanging out this is the way to go but gives you a little bit bigger of a profile and um, I'll obviously probably cut the head off this, but it adds a little bit of weight to your swim jig too. So bigger profile, a little bit more weight to kind of come through some cover or whatever you're fishing there. Again, horny toads, watermelon red. Okeechobee toad is the color. These are rage toads and they have the same kind of uh, legs on them, except these have that rage tail. Um, 
I don't know what the hell to call that. It's like a little lip. It's got that little ridge on the tail that's going to help move more water. So if the horny toads aren't working, maybe we'll throw those on and see if they move more water. Also, both of those toads will work fine by themselves on top water too. So we'll use them whichever way we can. Next up. All right. One of these we're going to slow down and show you because I went back and bought another bag of these because they were so cool. But first up, we have the VNM J Bug in Green Pumpkin. I kind of got these guys because I don't know if you guys know about Mystery Tackle Box, but they are bombarding my Facebook, uh, whatever that's called, my Facebook feed. And this picture keeps showing up. And you guys will know what I'm saying when you see this thing. These creatures are always, they, they just place them on the edge of the box so you can kind of see them. And every time I see them, I was like, man, I have to figure out what those creatures are. And this is what it is, guys. It is the VNM J Bug. Just a kind of cool looking different creature. Um, something I'll probably throw in a rugby jig or I don't know that I'll use it as a trailer. I'll probably throw it by itself Texas rigged or on a rugby jig or maybe even a drop shot if they're not biting nothing just because it's something different they haven't seen too much of and those are in green pumpkin now something i'm really excited about are these right here i went first and got them in black and blue and went back and got another color and these are the vnm wild thang I'm, that's how they say it wild thang series and these are the vnm cliffs wild craw and the reason i love these guys let me show these to you real quick Whoop, if I can get this thing open. These guys are a awesome craw. And the reason why these things are sweet is take a look at those claws on that thing. Tell me that thing is not realistic looking. If not, that is just some badass claws on there. Look at the bulkiness to them. Tell me that is not a badass craw. These are in Bama Bug, where it's June Bug on the bottom, Green Pumpkin on the top. I got some more in black and blue glitter and I'll probably go get a little bit lighter of a color because guys I'm telling you these might be my favorite new cross. It's probably a, a, a toss up between this and the Guggen Bates Kraken Craw. That Kraken Craw is one hell of a bait. So, but we got two packs of those and it is the Cliffs Wild Craw by VNM and this is their Wild Thing series. So um, this is one I would recommend checking out guys it's a pretty sweet bait next up we got a bait that I'll probably be using here for the next couple weeks or so and then it's probably gonna get put up but we have the Cabela's mean eye blade bait and this is in red craw and I like these because they are in 3a sounds so um, it's just a blade bait the hooks aren't too too small but they're not big in any sort but I think this will catch some fish right now with that water still cold and it has three different line ties like a lot of your baits. The further back you tie it, the more action it's going to give you. I like that these are in 3A sounds because I could probably get away with throwing them on a bait caster or uh, my spinning setup. So we got two of those because we know how I love losing moving baits or just treble hook baits, period. Those are actually pretty cheap too. They're like two bucks, two fifty a piece. So I had to grab two of them. These were strictly just uh, impulse buy and these are the zoom salty big critter craw and this color is black red with a red claw and you guys will see i just saw these in the bag and had to check them out look at that tell me that isn't a juicy little craw some it's a craw but it's a little different than what you're used to i like these simple bodies because you can cut them down and use them how you, how you need but I like how that red claw sticks out um i could get away throwing this by itself or putting it on the back of a jig you, I could probably cut these tentacles off if I'm not feeling them or leave them on there. But that is a pretty sweet uh, craw imitation. Again, those are the Zoom Big Critter Craw. And it is in black red with a red claw. All right, we got a bunch of striking baits to show you. First up, we got some Shadowlicious Swim Baits. Um, I see uh, Lake Fork guy Justin Rackley on YouTube throwing these a lot. Um, I've been stocking up on swim baits and this is just a, a little bit different style. Uh, these are in clear sexy shad and this is a four and a half inch swim bait. Just your basic boot tail swim bait. But I like these because they're hollow and they even though they're only four and a half inches they have a little bit bigger of a profile and they are hollow. So 
that should help you get some good uh, i'm guessing it would make for better hookups because when the fish grabs it it just crushes down and exposes that hook a lot easier than a solid rubber bait so boom shadowlicious shadowlicious is that's almost what i said it's plural i got some shadowlicious all right next up um this is a bait i didn't know existed until i saw it and I definitely had to get another pack on the next trip once I checked them out. But these are the Strike King Rage Tail 8 inch uh, recon worm. But look at this worm, guys. All right, it's got a nice little rib body, kind of like the Lake Fork uh, ring fry almost. Or So that's kind of cool. So even if I don't want the tail, I can cut it off and just throw that. But look at this tail, guys. It's got that nice long ribbon tail. But since it's a strike king, it has that nice little uh, raised ridge at the end. And um, my ideas are to kind of use this as a search bait where other stuff will get hung up. Texas rig this bad boy and just kind of treat it like a swimming worm. Or you could probably get away with jigging this thing. or It's just a sexy worm to me at least, guys. So that is in Watermelon Red Flake. And I thought it was such a badass lure. I had to grab another color just to kind of try them out. So I think they're going to work. I almost like 100% know these are going to work. I don't care where you're at in the country. These are going to work. And then we got another color in plum, which is a very good drop shot shaky head color for me. So why not try it in this worm, right? It's plum with some blue flake. And, um... These are, again, it is the Strike King 8-inch Recon Worm. So, uh, I don't know what else says a search bait other than the word Recon. So, it's the Reconnaissance Worm. So, that's what you do with it. You search out for the fish. And I don't know if you swim that worm past any fish that they let that thing go by. They're, they're going to snatch that up. They're going to snatch that thing up. All right, here we have one of my favorite baits. Uh, this is what I caught my first fish of the year in the second week of January in super cold water. These are, well, actually I used the baby version, but this is the four inch Rage Menace. Um, and the cool thing I wanna show you guys, I just kind of saw, a lot of you guys might already know this trick, but I just saw this the other day. Can't remember what channel, but it's basically a little grub bait with two little uh, kind of claw or like swim, swim little paddles on the back there. And of course, it's a rage tail lure, so it has that lip. But I actually caught uh, my first couple of fish of the year in cold water. I just put this alone by itself on a little rugby, a swinging rugby head jig. And I just let it sit and I let the water current just kind of push this thing around. And they picked it up and ran with it. But um, this is also a good like swim jig trailer, chatterbait trailer when you're not looking for too much action. But I think what I'm going to start doing, I usually put them flat like that and you get good action out of the tail. But I saw a trick if you mount these sideways as a trailer and split these apart, these will actually kick and look just like a little uh, fishtail. So depending on what you're trying to imitate, you can kind of switch up how you do that. But I, you will see me definitely trying that trick out, probably on the back of a swim jig, and see which does better, it this way or that way. I'm sure it doesn't make a huge difference, but depending on what you're trying to imitate, it could. So... Um, I almost want to call this color bluegill flash, but they just call it bluegill, but it is almost identical to Kitex uh, bluegill flash, except this one has a little bit more gold flake in it. So you will definitely see a bunch of fish caught on this bait. I don't care what color it is. This is one of my confidence baits in. It was by accident, really. So that is a good, good bait. I've had these on the back of jigs and swam them and those little things kick pretty good without being too much action or too much going on. So, all right guys, we're getting to the bulk of the box and most of what we got left is jigs. So fine. we'll save all the jigs for last. And uh, since I caught my first bass, since I got back into fishing a year ago was on a jig, jigs hold a very dear spot to my heart. So we'll save those for last because a jig bite is probably one of my favorite bites to get on. Next up, you guys know my favorite bait. Well, maybe you don't. My favorite bait is a chatter bait. That's what my PV's on. But I love the action of a chatter bait. And I love nine times out of ten, a fish is going to crush a chatter bait. Like, there's, you very rarely miss a chatter bait bite. But 
These are actually the Terminator shutter bait. I got one and three eighths and one and a half inch. Um, I, if we had more time, I'd take them out, but it's basically the chatter baits inbred cousin, I guess. But it is a chatter bait, but as you can see, it's got like a cup style blade. So it shutters side to side. It creates a little bit more action and it moves a lot more water than a chatter bait. But the cool thing about these is you can take these blades off, switch them around, or if you don't want the blade, like I fish on a kayak a lot, but I'm an idiot and I bring a ton of baits. But if you guys kayak fish or if you have a palm bag and you don't want to carry all kinds of stuff and you want to use a swim jig, pop that clip off. It's a swim jig, pop it back on. It is a chatter bait or a shutter bait. So we got three eighths and then I got half inch because like i said i don't have a whole lot of half half inch we got three eighths ounce and a half ounce um i just want to be sure to cover both uh depths of water you know so i do do a lot of shallow fishing but we're going to try some deeper water fishing this summer so um next up we have a bass pro shops xps swim bait and this is their laser eye shad swim bait and we're just going to go ahead and take it right out of the pack um, I think this thing is going to do work. I definitely want to throw some more swim baits. I got the Savage Gear Bluegill and the Live Target Threadfin Shad. But I think this thing is going to be the champ. So one of my favorite moving bait colors is this Sexy Shad. And as you guys can see, this is a plastic swim bait. And the action on it looks like it's going to be juicy. The only thing I don't know about on this is just that single uh, treble hook. I mean, I've seen guys kind of hook it up into the body, so there's just kind of two hooks exposed. It kind of keeps it from getting hung as much, I guess, but we'll just be limited to where we could throw this thing. It's not too big. It's a five inch bait. It's nine sixteenths ounces, or what's the weight on this? It is seven eighths of an ounce, so I could still get away with throwing this on my heavy rods. Um, I don't need an extra heavy or anything like that, but... That is a pretty cool bait, especially for the price. I think I got this thing for five or six bucks. It was like 20% off. But uh, let me tell you guys, the Bass Pro Shops brand is not bad. I mean, I've heard great things about their carbon light rods, their those Johnny Morris reels. Um, I got some more finesse jigs from them. I mean, for being store brand, they make a pretty good product. And like I said, since it's store brand, the prices aren't too bad. But... Time is precious, guys. Time is precious. So, you know, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Like I said, I had a couple more. These all next are uh, the, the Bass Pro band. They're that XPS brand. And first up, we have a tungsten squirming jig. Now, this is basically a swim jig with a scrounger blade on it or a scrounger head with a skirt, however you want to look at it. This is in the bluegill color. And the thing I like about it, one, it's got, it's kind of like a different version of a chatterbait, I guess, but it's got that plastic blade on there and the head is actually tungsten, which is awesome for sensitivity. And that's also why the head is so small because this is a three ace ounce. And since tungsten is more dense, it's not going to be as big. And this is in obviously a bluegill color. So, um, I think this thing is going to catch fish. I only got one just to try it out. So we'll see how this does but again that is the xps bass pro shops tungsten squirming jig next up we got some more xps jigs um at least at the actual tackle shops around me i haven't seen really any tungsten headed baits period so uh, this is one of the only brands but i've been looking for finesse jigs and when i mean finesse jigs i mean finesse jigs that aren't like an eighth ounce or <laughs> um a quarter ounce i was actually looking for regular weights but smaller profile jigs and cabela's had me hooked up well these are bass pro but they sell them at cabela's and uh these are the tungsten finesse jig all th i got three of them all three are in three ace ounce and they got a nice tungsten head on there and since it's a finesse jig, it doesn't have too bulky of a skirt. The skirts aren't too long, but it's still got a meaty hook. We'll pop one out real quick. I'm telling you guys, the, these are not bad baits for the money, man. They're not bad baits, period, no matter what you paid for them. So they make a pretty decent product. But for our finesse jig, this is kind of almost exactly what I'm looking for. I know the head seems a little big, but it's got a good skirt on it. This is uh, green pumpkin purple. They still have a decent hook for a finesse jig, plastic keeper. 
uh, not too bulky of a, I'll definitely trim this down, but not too bulky of a um, weed guard. And that is the XPS Bass Pro Shops Tungsten Finesse Jig. I got three of them. We got Okeechobee, uh, Oke Okeechobee color. Why can't I remember the name? Um, it just says Finesse Jig Okeechobee Craw or Okeechobee. It just says this is the Okeechobee color. So it's basically green pumpkin and blue. And then, of course, we got the black and blue. So, all right. Next up on the jigs. Uh, these might be my favorite brand of jigs. Um, they are dirty jigs. I have a couple of their other styles. These, again... I got in half ounce because I'm kind of bulking up on my half ounce stuff, trying out that deeper water this summer. And these are the Scott Canterbury Flippin' Jig. And a lot of their products are named after pros. So a lot of pros are working with dirty jigs. So, I mean, my other one is uh, the, the TL Pitching Jig. Um, I can't remember what the other one is. But this is Alabama Craw. This is black and blue, obviously. And these look like they'll be great for heavy cover. They have the swim jig style head, kind of hybrid head with the inline um, line tie. So they should come through cover pretty well. They got really good skirts. And I love dirty jigs because they have some meaty, meaty hooks. Meaty, meaty hooks. That sounded kind of creepy, but you fishing guys know what I mean out there. These have really good hooks, really good components, and they are just freaking good looking jigs. So we added to our dirty jig collection with two half ounce canterbury flipping jigs so bam got those next step we got gerald swindles buckeye lures balling out jig it, it's basically a finesse jig with a ball head on it this is in 3a sounds this one is in pb and j which i've seen a lot of youtube guys throw this color a lot lately out uh, john b sb fishing um a couple other guys i watch so uh, I didn't have any in this color. I mean, I guess it's basically green pumpkin purple. Just a little different shades. But as you can see, it's got the nice little ball head there. So it's kind of a, a versatile jig. But again, this is the Gerald Swindle's balling out jig. So it's got a good weed guard. I'm not sure about the hooks. I got some other uh, Buckeye Lure jigs here I'm about to show you in a minute. I figured, you know, Swindle would want a bigger hook on his baits. But still a pretty decent hook especially for a finesse jig so i mean he wouldn't put his name on it if it, if it was junk so that is the swindle buckeye lures balling out jig and these are i don't know if these are new or not but this is the first time i've seen these at cabela so i grabbed a couple and the other ones i got are the buckeye lures flat top finesse jig series and these are both in three eighths ounce I got another one in PV and J, and this one is in black and blue. So, and the difference with these is the head. It has a nice little flat head, so it'll literally sit even on my hand. It's not completely flat. These guys stand up pretty good on their own. And again, I don't know if I like the hooks, but I think that should get the job done. So they have nice plastic keepers. They have nice bulky skirts. I might have to trim these ones down, but... Again, we'll try them how they come at first, and if I'm not getting bites, we'll kind of do some customizing. I always cut the weed guards down a little bit, um, so we'll do that. But that is the Buckeye Lures Flat Top Series. I like how it has the, the recessed line tie. And that is the Flat Top Finesse Jig, and both of them are 3 8 sounds. You'll see me throw those a bunch, so you'll see me throw jigs a lot, obviously. Um... Another one I almost forgot about. I had it out of the package. I also got this jig. This is the Project Z Flip and Cast Jig. Um, just so you can see what it looked like. And I got one in black and blue. And this is a pretty good, cool jig. Um, I kind of just got one because I've never seen anything like it. Um, if I had to explain the skirt, the skirt's made out of like, it's made out of rubber or silicone, but it's got a different design to this skirt. Um, it almost looks like one of the zip car pool tab thingy. Oh, wow. That's showing my age. But any of my old heads or OGs out there that know, remember zip cars. If you remember the thing you had to kind of stick in and zip out or pull out to make the car go, that's almost what this skirt looks like. It's got these nice ridges on them. 
and I don't know if it'll give a different action. Um, it might work better on colder water. So I don't know. We're going to have to throw it. But um, Z-Man, they make a pretty good product. Um, all their components are decent. It has a funky little, like, rocking head on it. So this might be a good skipping jig. It's got that nice flat top, but it's got almost like a curve to the head. It's got a football style line tie, football jig, football head jig. At least that's, you know, this is kind of more for open areas rocky areas i don't really i wouldn't really throw like something like this into cover um just because i don't think it's meant to come through as easily as some of those other ones but like i said z-man always has nice good meaty hooks it's got a nice bulky skirt um i'm guessing this different kind of texture will make it kind of give it different action how it kind of poofs up when you jerk it so nice stiff weed guard but i thought that was cool guys and that is the Z-Man flip in cast jig. So we'll definitely try this out. We'll probably try this out sooner than later. But I don't think they're really going for anything with too big of a profile right now around me. So we might give it a couple weeks, let that water warm up, and then we'll start throwing that. And then last but not least, I have I almost was getting ready to order these. I was super happy when I saw these at Cabela's. I actually have one open right there. But these are impact lures jigs um an impact it's literally the letter m pack these are impact jigs i have uh, a half ounce flipping jig here and i have a three eighths ounce swim jig and uh the cool thing about these is they have a structure guard they kind of patented it and basically what it is is kind of like a, a stiffer plastic little wire there there's a little rubber guard here and so you want to put your trailer on, you kind of just move this thing up. I'm sure not to get hooked on that freaking barb. Put your trailer on, boom, it's on. You slide this back down and it's it acts like, uh, it basically makes the jig weedless. So um, I was checking out the Game Changer jig from Mystery Tackle Box. I might get one of those. That basically has a screw lock and you Texas rig it. But this is kind of another version of a weedless jig, and this is another one I got from Scott Martin. This is like, these are the jigs he fishes. Almost every video of him I watch, he brings up the impact jig. And But I really like the inline line ties. It's got a nice little bulky head on it. This one, I think, is 3 8 And that is in your... Uh, Bama bug color where it's purple and green and has a little June bug strips on it. Strips. I said strips. But tell me guys, that is not a badass jig. If any of you guys have used these before, please let me know in the comments. Let me know if they work good or if they don't. But I have been looking for these and I was glad to get them. I got another one in half ounce here. This is called Mean Green. And this is their half ounce flipping jig. And then... Of course, I got a swim jig in my favorite swim jig color, which is Sexy Shad. I probably have about five to 10 swim jig fish, and I would say probably 80% of them came on uh, Sexy Shad color. So I don't know what it is with moving baits up here, but they like that Sexy Shad color. So, And that is it just for Cabela's. That is not the only tackle I have bought in the last couple of months. That's just what I got from Cabela's. Guys, I have a serious problem. I am a tackle junkie for real. As you can see behind my shoulder over there on top of that tub, those are all bags from like Walmart, Dunham's, Dick's, Field and Stream. So if you guys want to see those, give me a like or let me know in the comments. And again, don't forget to go check out the video i posted before this catching cold water bass at a north park as soon as we get to 100 likes on that video i'm giving away those rattle traps so definitely one possibly two depends how quick we get there guys so um definitely this has been bitching and bassing and in general don't forget to like and subscribe show me your support guys and uh the quicker we grow the quicker i'll get content out to you guys so definitely share this with your friends let me know what works best for you in uh, Southwestern PA. Let me know what's your go-to spawn bait. What should I be throwing here in the next couple of weeks when this water finally warms up? I can tell you one, I'm definitely going to be throwing a trap. I'm definitely going to be throwing a jig. Um, 
and I don't know, maybe we'll try the recon worm. I'm not sure, so it would definitely be throwing a craw, obviously, so, and some crankbait. So I definitely have a handful of ideas, but definitely let me know what you guys would be throwing out there so I can get my game together. But that's it, guys. That's it for this tackle unboxing. It was already longer than I wanted it to be, but it was three trips to Cabela's, so there was a lot of stuff here, and I am happy because... I am stocked back up on my jigs. I might even buy some more jigs. Who knows? So there's probably more jigs in those bags, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, guys. Until the next one, this is Bitchin' and Bassin', and don't forget to keep slinging baits and faking weights. Peace.